Okay, y'all. So after God Titus, we're gonna be highlighting our asses off today. Okay, good. Uh, now I need you to highlight restlessness, increased pulse, retractions, and put respiratory song, right? Tacky tacky. Because basically this is all respiratory song. Keep this in mind. Those of you who know the respiratory song, that's all this is. It's a respiratory song. Okay. Now, so you got the pulse. You've got the restlessness, you got the retractions. Instead of retractions, we should probably say running, flaring, retracted. GFR, right? GFR. You got your anxiety, which means the same thing as restlessness as far as your concerns. The lung sound is inspiratory strider, highlighted. I told you, drooling. Everything on here is what you highlight, pretty much. Okay, now the treatment. You got some rules. It says don't examine the throat, don't open the mouth, don't do an oral tense. Make sure you know that. No oral temps, no throat cultures. Don't lay the child back. Don't cradle them. Don't lay them back and don't cradle them. This is a high grade fever. You need to write it. High grade fever, greater than 102. Everything is on here. Except for that. <laughs> so high grade fever. Another thing you gotta add is severe sore throat. You see it says position for comfort on there in the list? Put tripod. Put tripod position. Remember that's leaning forward, right? Okay. You see it says trach tray or endotracheal tube available right at bedside. So the trach set is at the bedside. Where it says humidified oxygen, put cool mist tent. Cool mist tent. Cool mist tent. Because it's a baby. Can you slap them upside the head with a non-rebreather? No. no. It's a baby. So you in a, you in a cool mist tent. Where it says no oral fluids and PO. Where it says IV fluids, steroids. So you've got IV fluids and steroids. You already see the humidified um, oxygen. Now, write a couple more things. Crash cart in the room. Because this baby's at risk for coding. Crash cart in the room. And never cradle this child. Cradle means laying back in your arms. Never cradle them. They gotta stay sitting up like this. Now, we have a vaccine. The vaccine for this child is Haemophilus influenza B. So put HIV. It's called a HIV vaccine. When do the baby get it? Two, four, and six months. Two, four, six, pick up sticks. There you go. Two, four, six. Why don't we ever see this? Because we have a Haemophilus influenza B vaccine. That's why. Now, but you gotta know what you're doing because we could get a child from another place, another country, another place that does not have this vaccine. And therefore, you gotta know what to do and how to recognize this. This baby, by the way, has a severe sore throat. They've got a severe sore throat and it's basically an obstruction. <coughs> Every now and then you had to know this and don't ask me shit because I still don't get it. Write it down. <laughs> Thumb print sign on chest x ray. Thumb print sign on chest x ray. This is droplet precautions. The population at risk is a toddler. The next three letters, grunting, flaring, retracting, leave them on this page. GFR is always respiratory distress in babies. Grunting, flaring, retracting, write it on this page. 
because that's what's on the next thing on the list. Just write grunting, flaring, retracting. Grunting, flaring, retracting. Again, respiratory distress in all babies. You only need one of those letters to see your patient first. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. Let's keep it moving. Find your asthma page. For your asthma patient, look at his chest. It's grunting, flaring, retracting. Okay, so he's retracting, and that's the use of accessory muscles to breathe. Ain't that right? Mm -hmm. Turn to asthma, Eddie. I don't know what you're doing, child. He's wearing a glass quite a bit. Oh, okay, baby. Uh, but if you look at his chest, it's very clear. He is retracting. Now, we're going straight down the page. That's what makes Pete so nice. You've got to go straight down the page. Where it says trigger, the number one is smoke. Where it says hypersensitivity, you want to put the word black. Because it's a mnemonic, but do it this way. Okay, what's the B? Bananas. Bananas. What's the L? Latex. Latex. What's the A? Avocado. Avocado. Or guacamole on your test, yeah. You never know. People like to remind you that avocados is guacamole. Uh, the C is chestnuts or any nut. <coughs> the K is kiwi or any citrus. So when I say hypersensitivity and I say bananas, latex, avocados slash guacamole, chestnuts slash any nuts, kiwi slash any citrus, like strawberries, oranges, lemons, citrus. When I say that, I'm trying to teach you that a patient with asthma, like my grandson, is probably going to die with one of these exposures. So he was in a hoja with nuts. Who knew? His dad took a hard haircut, got him Reese's Pieces in the little machine. He begged. We don't say no to Bryce. That's our problem. Never, never stop saying no. We should say no more. <laughs> so we don't say no. We can't. So that's what grandparents do and daddies do. So there you go. Black. Those substances can kill them. Now, it may be that none of them have affected them, but what every nurse should know is some of them, one of them could affect them. So during that hospital admission, that's why I love university, because they went latex free 30 years ago. Okay, so we don't even do latex over there. Mostly everybody had to go latex free. You can't be doing them balloons and stuff like that. The mylar balloons are fine. But avocados, chestnuts, kiwis, that's asthma patients and electric shock. A lot of them. Okay. Now that's called hypersensitivity, right? Mm -hmm. Now upper respiratory infection, put next to it seasonal allergies. Both of them can trigger an asthma attack. Most of everybody with asthma know that already. So URI is upper respiratory infection and put allergies or allergies can trigger asthma attack. Exercise induced asthma. That's very common. Make sure you put on here, use inhaler 30 minutes before exercise. Respiratory infection, same shit, same day. Um, for GERD, remember that heartburn and reflux disorder can trigger an asthma attack. And pets, especially cats. So Kelsey had a, a reaction to somebody who sat near her that had just bought a cat and slept with her kitten. She just sat by the girl in toe to toe. Cockroaches is on your test. Cockroaches. Because they do uh, exist in many, many neighborhoods like the ones I used to live in back in the day. They're just like part of the fucking family. Like, hey, what are we having for breakfast? They're not even afraid of lights. <laughs> so you got to remember that because depending on where you work and what children you take care of, their only risk factor is their fucking zip code where they live. And they just keep coming in every single month. Okay? All right, now medications that you have to know ASA, that's aspirin, PCN, penicillin, and NSAIDs. 
these can cause anaphylactic reactions, right? Mm -hmm. You know asthma is familial. So as we go down the page, you know it's reversible. Intermittent reversible airway obstruction. If I said irreversible, I would be talking about COPD. When you see these words, we're talking about asthma. Reversible. Highlight the word reversible. If I said irreversible, it would be, again, COPD, but it's reversible. Hypoxemia, self-explanatory, respiratory song, right? Mm -hmm. If you go over to the right-hand side, you'll see status asthmaticus. It means the asthma attack is not responding to bronchodilator. Asthma attack is not responding to bronchodilator. This baby needs a ventilator. Emergency, if symptoms don't respond after treatment in 30 minutes, put 911. But remember the 30 minutes. You really had to know him hit the 30 minutes. On the right hand side above that, Wheezing is the lung sound, and it's expiratory, right? Mm -hmm. Expiratory wheezing. What kind of blood gas is that? What is the acid-base imbalance that that patient probably has with asthma? Look at the gases. See where my, my test takers are. First, okay. Okay. Early is what? Early. 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 I asked what the acid-base imbalance was. What kind? Respiratory alkalosis in early asthma. In late asthma, what you got? Respiratory acidosis, right? So when you look at the CO2, always remember CO2 is an acid. So if you've got a high acid, you've got acidosis. What kind of condition this is? Respiratory, common sense. Okay, but my point is, early in the asthma attack, you're anxious and you're panicking and you're <laughs> hyperventilating. So you have a low CO2, you're blowing it off. Okay, you got to know that shit. Okay, shortness of breath, cough, mucus, blah, blah, blah. You get it. Turn the page. Right at the top of this page, just write it down, work with your girl. Put peak flow meter and MDI. Peak flow meter and MDI, which is meter dose inhaler. C procedures packet. Because we're doing procedures. Peak flow meter and MDI. C procedures packet. Now, the medications on the right hand side. These are very important. Where it says adrenergic, adrenergics, beta-2 agonists, albuterol, make sure you know that's a freaking bronchodilator. All of that is a bronchodilator, short acting. Remember, if it's a baby, you have to give it through a nebulizer. If it's a baby, you give it through a nebulizer. Steroids. This says inhaled, right? Make sure you put, for exacerbations, it's IV steroids also. Exacerbations is IV steroids. Theophylline, toxic at what? 20. 20. It will give you a prolonged QT interval. Dysrhythmias. Theophylline is toxic at 20. Yes, you care. It will give you a prolonged QT interval. It is last resort for patients who don't respond to anything else. And yes, I've used it. Or I should say, yes, I've ordered it. The affluent drips. Hydration. Common sense. Maintain O2 sets above what? Nine. Nine. Common sense. Anticholinergics. Okay, what's the anticholinergic I might use? What would I use? Atrovent. Atrovent, right? Atrovent is an example. 
anticholinergic. Okay. Dry, uh, remember what it does. What do we right. say about ad adrenergic? We had a little rhyme. Oh, don't spit. Oh. Can't spit, can't shit, can't see, can't pee. They're all out of order for whatever. <laughs> so in other words, it dries everything up. Well, you have excessive mucus production. It would be nice if we dried everything up. Okay, remember asthma is three things. Excessive mucus production, narrowing of the airway, and inflammation. I'm going to say that again because you care. Asthma is excessive mucus production, narrowing of the airways, and inflammation. So look at your drugs. Your steroids are anti-inflammatories. You took care of that one. Your anticholinergics dries everything up. You took care of the mucus. And then the narrow airways you opened up with the bronchodilator. When you know what the problem is, you can fix it. Three problems, three treatments. 